Hi there. Avatar Al here. I'm sorry, but the real Alan couldn't be bothered to turn up for this one, so you've got me instead. Having said that, I hope you will take this tutorial for what it is and find it useful. The technique that I'm about to show you came about because of a commercial project that I'm currently working on. It required a track vehicle. Now, as this job was previous, I could have not bothered to animate the tracks at all. However, it was important for the client to see this motion, so I had to come up with a way of doing it in iClone. Those of you who know iClone's history will be aware that a lot of their asset builds were created using Autodesk's 3ds Max, along with a range of plugins that Real Illusion created for that purpose. You can find tutorials on the internet that show how to create tank tracks in 3ds Max, rig them, animate them, and then export the necessary XML and AML data files so that the tracks will animate properly inside of iClone. The downside of this approach is that it takes a lot of work to set up and do, and of course you need a copy of 3ds Max. Previs, by its very nature, requires a fast and speedy approach to asset creation and delivery. To that end, I wanted a quick and dirty technique that would get the job done and not require complex 3D rigging. I am sure when iClone 7 comes out, we'll be able to use the new Morph Slider technology to do what I'm about to show you. However, I needed a solution right now that worked in iClone 6, so here it is. Now, due to signing a punitive NDA, I cannot show you the asset I'm currently working on. What I can do is show you the technique on a simpler design. Let's dive over to iClone and take a look at how the technique works. Let's get started by having a look at how the technique for the track is actually done in iClone. This will give you the overall idea and uh, then we'll just show you how it's put together. So let's simplify the scene a bit. So obviously this is our animated scene that uh, I did that little demo video of. So I'm just going to hide a whole load of things here just to simplify everything. And let's just home on this. Let's turn the grid back on. And here we have our tracks. So things to take away from this is that the tracks are three-dimensional. So you can see the treads sticking up nicely off the surface there. You can also see that there is a, a recess on the inside of the tracks for where the pinion uh, pinions fit. So that's all done using this same technique. So what is the technique? Well, let's have a look. If we go to our modify panel, uh, it's all done with materials. So what you're seeing here is we have a displacement map and a normal map. Uh, and it's these maps that are creating the effect. If I bring an image viewer to the fore, we can have a better look at the map. So this is a, a grayscale. So it's being used as a displacement map. Uh, and the actual displacement here, based on the UVs on our object, is actually allowing us to create the three-dimensional effect. So let's have a look at that. Uh, I'm going to come down here. And of course, when you have a displacement set up, you have your tessellation area. So I'm just going to simply take everything off here. And I am also going to turn our display wireframe. There we go. So that's what they, they actually look like. What we're actually seeing here is the original tracks uh, that have been triangulated, of course, because that's uh, how things work in iClone. Everything's triangulated. And then we can simply up the amount of resolution that we want to get the smoothness we want. And then we simply turn the multiplier up to get the three dimensions we need for our tracks. And the quality of the look of the tracks is dependent on the tessellation level. So if we go back and uh, to our normal mode, then what we'll see is that if we get close, you can see, uh, if you see artifacts, then basically all you need to do is just drag this up until you get a good high quality uh, level of tessellation happening. And the beauty of this, of course, it's all happening on your GPU, on your graphics card. iClone's not taking any performance hits by actually uh, you know, animating or working with, uh, with the track this way, which is quite a nice way. So that's, um, that's how the effect is created. It's completely done on the GPU. 
uh, using uh, bitmap control. You'll notice in the bitmap list we also have a normal map here. Uh, I'll be showing you how to do it in both ways with a normal and a bump map. But uh, there's a normal map uh, that goes with the displacement map. I'll explain why that needs to be the case when we go through the whole uh, workflow. So the next thing I suppose is where did this um, you know, asset come from? Well, like anything, you have to create it. You need a 3D app for that. And this is Modo, which just happens to be the one that I use in my day-to-day -day work. I appreciate you'll probably be using other app, app, you know, applications like Maya or Max or Blender, um, etc. I'm sure that if you understand how to make something simple like this, you'll have no trouble whatsoever making something like this in, in your app. I'll just quickly show you how it's created. One thing I will point out here with the track is you'll notice that it's got a lot of little um, polygons on it. So there's all these square polygons across the surface. This is important. Uh, this is for tessellation. Technically, you know, we could lose all of these interior edge loops uh, on, a, on a normal model. They wouldn't be necessary because, um, you know, you can just have one big flat surface because this is flat. But we require this level of detail so that when the uh, tessellation level inside of iCloud is dragged up, uh, we actually get a good amount of uh, you know, even tessellation across the entire model to, the, to get that quality of displacement. Let's just quickly look at how I put this together. Now, if, if you happen to be a Houdini user, uh, this was actually done mo you know, pretty much procedurally. All I did was I created one little piece of track you know, using a cube. So this is nothing more than, there we go. It's nothing more than a cube with a, a number of uh, segments on it so that we get all the squares that I need for the tessellation. And then I just delete the ends using a delete op. And then I've got a bevel going on the edge here just to give it a nice bevel. So that is really all that is. And what's happening then is that is being fed into another procedural system, um, which makes the track. So if I come to this, this one, you'll see that I've brought that uh, item in and, and scaled it down to flatten it a bit. Uh, I then clone it off the number of times I need for the length of the track. I then apply my first bend operator to bend it around. And then I apply my second bend operator uh, to bring you know, to make the track. And then the final thing I'm doing right at the top is I'm doing a vertex merge just to merge the vertices at the point where the two, the two ends of the track have actually met. Uh, very straightforward, uh, just the way I you know, like to make it. But you can use path extrudes or whatever in the app of your choice. There's a whole load of ways of making an object that's really this this simple. Now that we've got an object like this, we need to make sure it's got UV coordinates. So let's have a look at that. So I've frozen the object out for use at, outside of Modo. So I've converted that procedural system to a frozen mesh, which is what this one here is. I'm just going to switch to the UV editor just so you can see how the UVs are laid out. So let's uh, just select our UVs. And here is our, our UV layout over here. And the main thing to note here is where the seams are. Uh, I've deliberately placed the UV seam in the center of the track on the underneath. So if I go to edge mode and I just select the edge here, then you'll notice in this window that I've actually placed the UV seam on the on the underside of the track. Since that's going to be on the ground, your eye's not really going to be you know, looking there for a seam. It's going to be well hidden. Uh, the other seam is the edge seams here. So I've put those on the inside of the track. So if this is the left track, you'll see that I've chosen the other split UV seam to be on the inside here. Uh, what that does is when this is then stretched out and flattened out like this, we have the two uh, sides of the track. We have the interior loop uh, and the exterior loop. So that's the exterior there. And then here we have the interior. So this is now our, our UV setup. This is what we're going to actually use. Uh, to make our UV, um, you know, to make our uh, displacement maps. Most packages can let you export a template. I, I'm just going to, in Modo, I just come up here and I'm going to do a uh, convert to SVG file. Go to my desktop, into the folder that I've created, and I'm going to call this Tracks UV. Okay, so that covers us for a little overview of, uh, of how this is done. Let's uh, get into the detail.
For this next stage, I'm going to be using a package called Affinity Designer by Serif. Now, you can use any package you like. You can obviously use Photoshop, and uh, you can also use free applications like Critter. All of, all of these can create what I'm about to show you. I'm using Affinity Designer purely because it's my preference. Uh, I wanted a replacement for Adobe products, and the price point for this worked really nicely. And I'm also using Designer because it's a vector-based system. And what we're about to do you know, is basically make, making a lot of rectangles and shapes. And typically, I prefer to do that in a vector illustration package as opposed to you know, a bitmap-based package. Right, having said that, let's get going. So file menu. I'm just going to open the SVG file that I created previously. So I'm in my desktop uh, excavator tracks folder. So here's the UV guide that we exported. And I'm just going to bring it in. And uh, here we are. Now, the first thing I'm going to do when I bring this in is I need to make sure I've got the right document size. The file defaults based on what was, what was you know, output from Modo and being a vector based system, it doesn't really know what size you want. So I'm just going to come up to the file menu and go to document setup. And you'll notice that it's actually only a thousand pixels. Well, I'm just going to go for the usual magic number 1024. Uh, I've got it locked, so it's going to be a square. And what this is going to do is it's going to upscale to that format uh, everything. So all the, anch the anchor set to the, the middle of the canvas. So all I've done now is I've actually now made the document 1024 square and that's going to be the size that you know we're going to use for our, our texture map now that we've done that I'm just going to rename this layer by double clicking on it I'm going to call it tracks UV guide there we go and let's get started we're making a height map and the way height maps work in iCloud is they have a mid-level where the height is not altered. Uh, and that is a mid-gray. So the idea is that mid-gray is basically no height adjustment at all, i.e. zero adjustment. So I'm going to make a new layer. And let's call this mid-gray. And with that layer selected, I'm going to come over to my shapes. I'm going to select a rectangle tool. I'm going to come up here. And I'm, let's just check it. So I've selected this gray off here because I've used it before. But we can have a look and see. And sure enough, you can see the lightness value set to 50. So that's a 50% mid gray. It's exactly what we want. So that's good. So now that I've done that, let's and now notice the snapping's on. So any tool like this will typically have snapping so I'm just going to use that to my advantage I'm going to just snap out a completely grey layer so I'll do the job nicely and then I'm just going to bring the tracks UV layer above it just so that we can see it so now we can see our we've got a grey background we've also got our our kind of tracks uh, on top of it let's zoom in a bit control plus just like in Photoshop zooms in middle mouse button Let's me scroll. And what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm basically going to use these squares here just to, to help me lay out the tracks. Now, remember, the right hand section here is the outer track and the left hand side here will be the inner or the inside of the tracks. So the first thing I want to do is I want to you know, make a make a tread. So I'm just going to make a new layer. Always a good thing to keep things on layers. I'm going to call this raised because this is going to be our raised side. Like so. And let's just make sure I'm using white. And I go back to my rectangle tool. And I'm just going to drag out rectangle like so. Now I'm going to hold Control plus zoom in a bit more. Middle mouse button to scroll. And I'm going to go into select mode just so I can shift this around. Notice it's snapping nicely to my grid underneath, which is quite handy. And I'm going to just lay this out so it's basically going to give me the kind of tread effect that I'm, I'm kind of after. 
something like that. It's just snapping nicely to the, the middle between the two. There we go. So now we've done that, I'm going to have a little gap uh, and then I'm going to duplicate it. So edit, duplicate, I'm going to drag it down to here. And one of the nice things now that I've duplicated it once, if I do duplicate again, which is control J to remember that kind of offset, which is rather nice. So if I just keep hitting duplicate, so I hit control O to get back to full screen and I can now just copy off my treads like so. Okay. Let's uh, go back in and scroll over. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the sunken side. That's going to be over on the left here. So that's the raised one set. So let's make a new layer. I'm going to call this sunken. You can call it depressed, whatever you want. Recessed, uh, any word like that's good. So this time uh, I want to have black so that it's pushed in and back to our tool. And we, I'm it's going to be centered on the tread again. So let's uh, come over here and I'm just going to draw it out just where that grid section is there. And then I'm going to go into select mode and I'm just going to check that it's snapping nicely to the grid lines. Being a vector object, that's really handy because what's it, what it's doing here is it's realizing that the tracks UV guide is an SVG file, so it's a vector file, uh, and therefore it can snap to it rather nicely, which is kind of cool. Again, control J to make a duplicate, bring it down to here, and now I can just repeatedly hit control J. So control zero to fill screen, and then control J just to get myself all the way down to the end. There we go. Now we're using a gap of like, um, as you can see, we've got a slight deviation as, we, as we've copied through. Uh, they're kind of separating apart a bit, but that's not really a big deal. It's just because the nature of, the, of how the grid is. So I'm just going to delete this one here and we're just going to make some adjustments to to these tracks globally. Now, the way you make adjustments globally is quite handy. You can just select the layer and you'll notice that with the layer selected, every single shape inside the layer, because we open it up, you'll see these are all the rectangles that I've created um, and they're in this layer. But when you select a layer, you nicely get everything selected for you. And that means I can just come down here and drag this down and I'm going to do the same as sunken and drag this down so it snaps to that line there control zero to back out and there we are so we have our the makings of our height map we can turn off the uh, uv guide because obviously we don't want that going out into our um, texture map we just want this as our height map uh, and this is now ready for for export good time to save so i'm just going to come up to the file menu to save as It'll automatically offer the affinity AF design uh, suffix. So that's exactly the format we want to save in. This is the native format of Affinity Designer. It's using the same name as the SGV file, so that's handy. So let's just use that. And there we go. So now we're ready to export. So we've saved the Affinity file, which is obviously a vector based document. I can now go to File Export. I'm going to use PNG. It's picked up the size of the document, which is correct. And we're just going to do an export into the same folder. And this time I'm just going to call it tracks height, because this is our height map. And then save, and we're ready to try it out in iClone. Okay, we need to get our tracks into iClone. So here we are back in Modo. And I'm in the game tools. I'm just going to go. I've got a preset here for exporting the FBX in a format that uh, 3D Exchange likes. So I'm just going to do export as. And as you can see, it's using the name tracks FBX. That's absolutely fine. That's what our Luxology file is called. And now we have our FBX file. So let's bring up 3D Exchange. 
Can I go open? Go into my excavator tracks folder, and there's our FBX. Just to bring it in. There's no animation, of course, with a static prop. So here we are. So we now have our tracks object. I'm just going to rename the root node. <coughs> Call it tracks UV demo. And then with the actual mesh selected, because that's what you have to do, I'm just going to send this, push it into iClone for me. So let's hop to iClone. And here we are. So I'm just going to do a home on that so we can see it nice and clearly. And we're ready to get texturing. Okay, let's go to our material panel, texture settings. And what we're going to do here is we're going to bring in uh, the displacement map because we've created a height map and that's exactly what our displacement map is. So let's just double click and go down into excavator folder. Here's the PNG we just saved out of Affinity Designer. So let's open that. Now we get this dialog and you can see you can you can have a vector displacement map. This is not a obviously a vector displacement map. So it'll default to a height map grayscale. Uh, and it has this option here ticked called auto assign bitmap to bump channel. Now, I'm not going to do that initially because I want to show you one of the issues. You have to be aware of why you need two maps at the same time. So I'm just going to say OK to that. And then we're going to come down here now that we've got this texture. Actually, I'll minimize it for the moment. Here's our tessellation panel. And I'm going to start dialing up the multiplier. So there we go. Um, the problem is the shading is awful and this is the issue this is why you need two maps you can't just have a height map because that isn't sufficient for the shading to work properly it's actually just causing the displacement so we do actually need that kind of bump map so let's go back to our textures and let's load it again and this time I'm going to have auto assign to bump channel and that's going to automatically put it into the bump channel for me. And now you can see it's working properly when we're getting shading and the height. So let's minimize that and go back to our tessellation. And now we can stretch up. Now obviously we haven't got much in the way of tessellation going on here. Remember you can see the tessellation by just coming here and going wireframe on solid and we just need to make sure that we dial up enough tessellation to give ourselves you know a, you know a nice rounded effect and to be honest i sometimes go all the way up so i'm going to go up to nine on this uh, and although that looks like a hell of a lot of geometry don't forget this is all done on the graphics card so let's go back to the scene manager and go back to normal shading so there we go uh, we have a three-dimensional set of tracks a uh, bit extreme, but don't forget, that's the whole point. We just dial it down to something sensible. Maybe like here, notice that you get a, some shading issues when you push the displacement uh, past the actual thickness of the overall geometry. So you just have to find the right level. But there we are. We now have a three-dimensional track, which, uh, you know, works quite nicely. And we don't just test it because obviously we're going to be animating this and we have to check that the seam. You can get issues with the seam um, with the, the UVs. So first thing we want to do is we want to test animate. And the way you animate this because it's done with maps is, of course, you uh, use the UV offset, which is animatable. It's in green, which means you can animate it. And the UV offset, we don't want you because that's the wrong way. We can type that in and you'll see what happens. That's uh, affecting the... The, the kind of u, u value so let's just type in still point one on v now the reason this isn't working and it looks weird is i've made a fundamental basic iclone error here uh, i'll just control z to undo that you have to make sure you have have effect all channels on because don't forget we have a displacement map and a bump map and at the moment when i change the, the offset or the tiling here for the uvs it's only affecting the one that's highlighted here in green and it's not affecting the bump. So the bump's not staying in sync with it. So make sure effect uh, all channels is on. And now you know, we'll see the kind of behavior 
that we'd expect. So, you know, we're now kind of, let's just do that. There we go. So that's now, you can see that's now moved the tracks around uh, our, our object. Now, one thing you can also do in these fields, a lot of people don't realize is you can jog. Uh, I don't know if you are aware that you can just place your mouse in the area of the um, the numbers and you can just scroll the mouse wheel and that's actually scrolling the values. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking for the, the seam join and you can see it here coming around. That gap is, is what we're, you know, what I'm after looking at. So let's uh, bring it around and what we're seeing here is this bit of a gap here. So we need to go back to Affinity Designer and we need to modify our map to fix this. So let's jump back. And I'm going to select the sunken and the rays because we need to adjust them together. And I'm simply going to just drag this down. I'll put it at the edge for the moment. I'm going past the, the UV guide, but uh, I just want to see, we'll see if this fixes it. So I'm just going to do an export and call it tracks height. We want to overwrite it and then pop back to iClone. It's up. It's auto updated, but as you can see, it's not all auto updating the bump map, which is what the problem is. It's uh, auto because this is linked. It's not updating this map as well. Uh, we could try linking that map in too, but sometimes that causes issues. But let's have a look. It's just going to be a bump map. Yeah, you can see it's got a shading problem because it doesn't know it's not interpreting the bump map properly. And this appears to be something to do with the display, how the displacement works, because um, when you actually load it via the displacement slot, it copies it into the bump channel in a different way. And as you can see, you get a proper result um, when you load it in. And that's good. You can see we're no longer seeing that gap. We could, it's a bit narrow now. We could maybe split the difference in infinity. It's just a little to and froing. Uh, I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to turn off snapping and let's just bring it sort of maybe back to sort of there and then turn our thing off. Sport again. And I'm just going to do a save for good measure. Affinity file. Back to iClone. And again, just going to blow these away and reload say okay that's pretty good I'm gonna go with that so I'm gonna come down here and zero out the UV just gonna put our track back where it wants to be at its start uh, and we can now animate this this is kind of ready to ready to animate let's do that very quickly so I'm just going to back away a bit move over here and bring my timeline up and not my timeline my project I'm gonna do 240 actually no I'll do 480 because um I know 480 works well for this so 480 frames I'm gonna go right to the end and I'm gonna type in now this is gonna look weird because when I I'm gonna type in one because I want to move the UVs by one unit uh, and what I'll do is it can't do that so it'll it'll go to 0 0.9999 which is fine but for some reason it goes negative so if we play this you'll see the tracks are going the wrong way for what I want but that's an easy fix because I'm just going to go to the last keyframe the last frame where the key is and just remove the minus sign like so now we'll get the tracks going forward excellent so all I need to do now is move them. So I'll just turn on the W, get my transform widget up, gizmo, and yeah, there we go. Now a little bit of slippage, but that's fine. What, what we can do is we can, again, just move it forward a bit more until we get a point where we don't see any slippage on the ground, like so. Now the other thing we do to make this obviously a bit smoother, if I go to Control 3 into animation, I'm just going to make sure I can see my entire timeline. We can put ease ins and ease outs on it. So if I go to the end here, I can put in an ease in, ease out on the move. Now that's not going to affect the tracks, as you can see, they're still going linear from from the first frame. But that's because it's the material that's doing the animation. So 
we do need to get the material um, up so let's do that so let's add the material in um, so here we go material tracks here's the texture UVs and here is our keyframe over here and this wants an ease in ease out too and now we have a set of tracks that start slowly builds up speed goes forward and then gets to the end and decelerates and you can do all sorts of things like you can put these on that paths make them turn and things like that so you can do path based animation and you can also hold down control key and just copy it off um, and of course it has all the animation on it so we now have two tracks and obviously it's going to join up at the end because of the keyframing so we just need to find out um, what our value is for the last for the offset so to fix that I just need to make sure I've got this value here go to the last frame and paste it in Q to drop my tool now we have two tracks side by side and that's it the only other thing that I'll do in a separate video is uh, loading a normal map or how to make a normal map if you want to you know use better um, a kind of slightly better quality uh, displacement uh, and things like that and obviously one thing the other thing you can do to make this smoother uh, is you could apply blur filters in your you know in your uh, 2d package to soften the edges of these uh, shapes so that they give a softer transition so keep that in mind I've just done them hard here but you can just as easily uh, produce a very nice soft effect by by using some blurring uh, or gradients and things like that uh, in the 2d app that you choose to use okay well that's it I hope you found it uh, interesting and um, yeah speak soon